Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to all the new subscribers. We've got quite a few new subscribers this time and a very special welcome to a nine month old viewer that I have. I've got the comment from your mum up on my screen and she says, my nine month old daughter loves dancing to your intro laugh out loud and I thought that was so cool so namaste to my nine month old viewer I don't know if you can press your hands together how cute would that be and yeah I love that you're dancing to the intro what I will do in this month's episode is I will edit the intro a bit longer so that you've got a little bit more dance time very important I'm so glad to hear that already you've figured out that the secret to life is really just music and dancing and that's about it there's also cake cake is another very good thing you reminded me of a birthday party that i had a couple of years ago i had a milestone birthday so i thought why don't i get some friends together and i did that and i had a big cake and anyway one of my friends he brought his daughter and she turned up and she just came up to me she found out i'm the birthday girl she came up to me and she said i'm here for cake and that was it and it was so cool we all just burst out laughing because that's why we were all there too we weren't there for much else either so you know i always think that children and animals have they're the wisest creatures on the planet actually and this is all reminding me as well of that quote by Eckhart Tolle who said I've had many Zen masters all of them cats I think that's so true well anyway let's get on with the news what do we have happening in the sky this month we're going to take a look at that I'm also going to do a little bit of a news matchup I only have one article of news that I want to go through today and of course we're going to go through the mini breakdowns as well so be sure to click on your moon sign your ascendant sign your sun sign you can click on any one of those and as you tune into these you will know what works best for you okay so for some of you some of you out there are commenting and you're saying the ascendant works for me the moon doesn't work that's how that is for you uh, some of you I know for me the moon is always works a treat so you know that's why I focus in on the moon also in the traditional text they always recommend that we look at uh, you know gochara from the moon it's always it's always from the moon so that's that's how I've done it that way but really you tune into whatever's the best for you there is a link below if you don't know your Vedic moon sign your Vedic sun sign and your Vedic ascendant uh, I do suggest that you look it up if for any reason the link below doesn't work you can type in Vedic astrology calculator and it should you know Vedic astrology chart calculator or something like that and you should be able to find a place where you can put in your details and get your chart there are also apps which you can download onto your phone and get an easy birth chart that way one of these days I would love to put a calculator on my website who knows maybe I'll just put that out there to the universe there we go <laughs> any tech angels are listening and can help me with that uh, I'm putting that out there so anyway let's take a look at what's going on as per my notes so the first thing that I want to talk about is just a really simple news matchup and it's not that exciting it's just the fact that Bill Gates is getting a divorce I thought that was interesting news and what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you to a case study that I did on Bill Gates above you can watch that it starts really at 5 minutes 20 seconds where I start to talk about the fact that Bill Gates was in court for much of his Sadi Sati period and I made a prediction and I'm making the prediction again here that I think he very likely will be caught in court uh, this is we're looking at from April 2022 to August 2029 so that's very interesting the one thing that concerned me about this that will there be justice I started thinking about well will there be justice will the courts even be working you know um, will they be able to investigate him properly and, and do things 
and find out, you know, get to the bottom of everything, get to the bottom of what's going on uh, with those, with that kind of elite echelon of people. Is that going to happen? It seems unlikely, you know, the game is set up in their favor, but uh, we do have Jupiter in his own house in Pisces. Uh, and I've got the note here that that's, yeah, could, could Jupiter being in his own house in Pisces, which is going to happen April 22 to about April 2023. And that's also coinciding with the time that I'm saying that Bill Gates could be in court. So with this thing of Jupiter being in his own house, could this be the beginning of the court system being renewed and improved? Because he's going to be opposite that sixth, uh, well, opposite Virgo anyway. It's something to look out for. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that up as a piece of news. That's the only bit of news that I'm going to match up, actually. Uh, I do believe it's a bit of a slow year, news-wise. I did say that when I was looking at the year ahead, that I... I'm pretty sure I said that this is going to be a slow and raw year, I think I did say. Uh, I know that things are still really, really difficult in India and I'm still praying for India uh, every day. You know, anyone suffering in the world is in my prayers. That's just something I'm doing now. So, um, and that's s such a simple thing for me to do. So that's... That's what we've got there in the news. So let's take a look at the stars in brief for this month. What's the big news in June? We've got a solar eclipse. Now, as we know with solar eclipses, they are very much future focused. This is a time where we're hopefully going to reach, reach for some new ground collectively and individually. And in the mini readings, I'm going to break down where that is for you. But let's take a look at how this can play out collectively. So solar eclipse in Taurus, 10th June. Do check if you're in the United States, if you're in the United Kingdom, double check that because I am looking at Sydney, Australia times. So I've got my software set to my current location. This is all happening, yes, in Taurus, in Mrikshira Nakshatra. So this is the deer that seeks beauty, okay? Uh, and I've got the note here that overall I'm seeing this will be a really lovely solar eclipse actually. When I was looking at it, just looking at the stars, I, I felt really good and I liked the energy. I just thought this is going to be a positive thing, I think. I think this is going to be a good thing. I don't see this as being a bad solar eclipse. Uh, I'm not getting that vibe. So I'm getting the vibe that this can be really nice. And I've got the note here that this will be where humanity is reaching for the best. We need to reach for what is good. Okay, so the deer that seeks beauty, I think this is a time where we are going to collectively seek for better. You know, um, I think collectively the world has had an incredibly tough time since, since Saturn went into Capricorn, Feb, March 2020, right? And we saw how that is the exact time when pretty much the world started shutting down and when businesses started shutting down. So this is all very much in line with the sidereal Vedic system. But I think this eclipse is actually going to be something that's going to be potentially just bring us an ability to reach for more, to reach for better, you know, and I see that as a positive thing. Now, full moon, we're going to have a full moon, 25th June, in Sagittarius, in Mula Nakshatra. Now, one of the things I'll try to do for this full moon is I'll try to do a mini breakdown closer to the day. Uh, I didn't include that in your reports because we're already going to be covering quite a bit. So I'll make a note of that now, actually, the 25th June full moon. I'll try to do just a short, you know, half hour burst where I go through each sign. So hopefully I've got time to do that. But for an overall note, I've got the note here that, you know, if you've been trying to get to the bottom of something, this is Mula Nakshatra. So if you've been trying to get to the bottom of something or figure out the root cause of something, you may be able to do so at this time. This could be a time of realization, of culmination, of understanding where you get some aha moments maybe you see something complete this could be a really good time 
And because it's that Mula Nakshatra, I'm viewing this as quite an important full moon because this could be closing off some cycles and some things that kicked off when we've had a lot of, you know, we had sat and go through Mula Nakshatra and we've, we've gone through some interesting times with um, heavy Sagittarius and Mula Nakshatra. So it could be, that could be a big full moon. So I, I'm going to try and do an episode on that. I've got the note here that Mars will be debilitated until 20th July. This is a really important placement. We're going to have Mars moving into Cancer. Okay. Uh, now, I believe that this is going to mean that Ketu has more power because Mars is Lord of the house where Ketu is. Ketu is in Scorpio. Mars is the Lord. Mars is now debilitated. So Mars isn't particularly operating on full power. And for that reason, I kind of believe that Ketu is somehow going to be stronger, maybe. So I've got the note here that the material veil may seem a bit thinner at this time. This is something for us to observe. Let's see. Uh, this is a theory of mine, so I'm not saying that this is set in stone or any of that. Let's see if this is the case, that Ketu will be stronger. Uh, I've got the note here, you might find yourself being a little bit more psychic. You might find yourself being able to access your own information. Perhaps this will be a time where you can be a bit more in touch with gifts that you've built up over past lifetimes. So that is a really interesting thing. Let's see if that's the case. I've got another note here that Mars will be opposite Saturn through to July 20th. Okay. This is very important for absolutely everybody across the board. Keep an eye on your debt. If you have a lot of debt or you need debt or um, make sure, try and be careful with that through to this period. Or maybe you've come out of debt and you've said to yourself, I don't ever want to be debt in debt again. Okay, I'm flagging this as a potential time where, um, where it could be possible to accumulate some debt. I have seen this, uh, you know, it might not be for every sign, but I have seen that sometimes when Mars is opposite Saturn, that can be a real time where debt gets accumulated. So be careful with that. That's kind of general across the board note there. But that's about all I've got for the overall overview type of stuff. We're now good to get into the mini readings. So we're at the 12 minute mark. Hey, that's all right. That's not too bad. Okay. Well, let's begin. Let's take a look at Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is for Aries moon or Aries ascendant or Aries sun. You can check any of these, uh, but we're going to take a look at you now, Aries. So there is a solar eclipse on the 10th of June. This is the big news and I'm going to focus the reading on this. So where is that happening for you? Now that's happening for you in your second and third houses. Now I'm including the third house as there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Mercury. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm kind of looking at both of those houses there when I talk about this. Now for you, this is going to be in the area of communication and this is both information that you share and information that comes in. Okay. And I think this is going to be an excellent time for your communication to increase or to improve. Okay. There's something you need to say. It may well get said, it may well get said quite beautifully with Venus and uh, Mars, uh, Mercury, sorry, having an exchange there. So you could say what you have to say very artistically. Uh, who knows, you might be writing some poetry, I don't know. Let's see though, information you share and, and what comes in. So Venus and Mercury, this is the artist combination. So it might be that you get some really good ideas for your art if, if you're an artist or a creative person of any kind, right? So I have the note here, look for intuitive insights, psychic downloads. Creatively, this can be an amazing time. Now, I'm also going to take a look at Mars and Ketu. For you, Mars is, he's basically moved into your fourth house. Uh, and I'm going to say here that this is not a great time for property. It's not a great time for moving. 
if you have to move or if you have to do any of that of course do it you know just uh, be careful I suppose this is through to July these kind of bits of guidance they're really just there in case you've got some pie in the sky idea that can easily be moved okay so don't think that like you have to follow these rules it's not the case um, this is the kind of thing that it's just helpful to know so I am saying that yeah not not great time for property or moving or buying property or any of that so that's through to July it is a bit long as I say if you can't shift your plans don't worry about it um, you've got K2 in the 8th yeah I love this K2 in the 8th for you I think this is going to enrich the eclipse time and I think this might well be a time that so yes you're kind of reaching forward with that Rahu's son there in, in Taurus you're reaching for better communication all this kind of thing but I also think that with Ketu being strong at this time I think this could be amazing in terms of um, bringing you deep spiritual insights at this time or perhaps an awakening of an old gift or something like that so be on the lookout for all that kind of thing but basically in summary what do we have here for you I think create Activity and communication are the highlights for this month and the solar eclipse can course correct you okay so if you feel that you've been behind in terms of your wealth and or in relation to your peers or even your family this solar eclipse could have you jumping forward it could bring you back uh, on track and I actually did observe this happening in my life there was I think it, for me it was to do with career and I did notice that I had felt really behind and then a solar eclipse did happen and I did find that whoosh I just jumped ahead to where I actually should have been so it's incredible uh, the universe can really just propel you forward sometimes out of nowhere I've got also got a note to say that this might take some months to see the results of this so you might observe the eclipse come and go and nothing much happened yes that's that's correct it can be like that but this could be the point where things really shift for you down the track because it's like a big ship turning you know a big ship takes time to turn so when it comes to course corrections don't expect uh, dramatic results immediately it could be something you need to observe over time so Aries that is what I have for you this month I'm wishing you well I'm wishing you good vibes good times stay high vibe as much as you can because that is honestly that is your gift to the collective you know um, you being happy could be preventing bad things from happening somewhere else so thank you so much Aries and we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is either Taurus moon Taurus ascendant Taurus sun you're all welcome so let's take a look at your month ahead now the big news this month is the solar eclipse and that is happening on the 10th of June I'm saying if you are in the United Kingdom or United States you might want to Google search and just find the precise date and time where you are this is the time as per Sydney Australia so it's 10th June here uh, and for you this is happening in your first and second houses Wow okay this is big this is all about you Taurus of course it is it's happening in Taurus <laughs> it's happening in Rickshire this is all about you so let's take a look here now I'm including the second house in the discussion of this because we have a Parivartana exchange between Venus and Mercury so I've got a note here saying for you this is going to make you more psychic okay because yes it's, it's Rahu Moon uh, Sun Mercury I think this could make you very psychic and um, I've got a note here keep a dream journal and look out for intuitive hits and guidance if you are an artist jot down your ideas so keep a little book with you or uh, what I was doing at one time was I was just using my phone and I was just recording lines or, or things that came in to my mind just in little voice notes and I was finding that to be really helpful so jot down your ideas don't lose them I'm looking at Mars and Ketu together now and I'm doing that because Mars is the Lord 
of the Ketu house and Mars is going to be debilitated through to July, about mid-July. So let's have a look at this for you. Oh, Mars in the third house. That's great energy. This is really, really good. So this is great in terms of health. You're going to have energy. You're going to be able to devote that to your projects. You're going to have the confidence and the courage to, to create, to put more stuff out there, to get more out there. If you've got social media, you might find yourself putting out more content. Okay, so this is all the way through to July. That's great energy. So try to use that. Uh, you've got Ketu in the seventh. Now this this is pretty good. Um, I've got the note here that this will hopefully keep you grounded and you'll also want to keep your expenses in check as well. Okay, uh, but there's some nice energy there and I'm in Ketu in the seventh. The, that can be good for um, self-employed people. You know, there's a bit more focus there. So self-employed, also if you've got social media and that kind of thing, it's, it's good for that. It may not be so great, it might be a bit testing in terms of your marriage, but, or business partnership or something like that, but if you can keep the focus on you being productive, you creating, you being courageous, you using that Mars energy, that's gonna be amazing. So in summary, we've got solar eclipse happening, which can course correct your entire sense of life purpose because this is happening in your first house so in terms of this thing of course correction and where can a solar eclipse jump you forward for you this is happening in, in the realm of your entire sense of self so if you as a person feel behind in any way and this could be financial as well if you feel behind financially or just in terms of where you're at in life if you're feeling behind this solar eclipse really has the power and the potential to jump you forward and to get you where you think you should be, which sometimes isn't always where we should be. <laughs> sometimes the universe has different ideas, but I, I have witnessed this in my own life, that a solar eclipse one time did jump me forward on my path and I felt, oh wow, that it was, it was pretty amazing. So I have observed this. Sometimes I've observed with eclipses, they come and go and nothing much happens. But the other thing is that and I've got the note here that this eclipse may jump you forward, but it might take some months for you to feel it. And that's because if it's a big ship turning, that can really take time. So you may not notice the effects until later. So keep observing, keep seeing how this is working for you, Taurus, Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant, Taurus sun. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, Gemini Moon, Gemini Sun, Gemini Ascendant, welcome, welcome to your mini reading. So what's the big news this month? It's a solar eclipse and this solar eclipse is happening on the 10th of June and that's here in Sydney, Australia, but check where it's happening for you, United Kingdom, United States, might be a little bit different. But on the 10th of June, you've got this amazing solar eclipse that's happening for you in your 12th and 1st houses. Now the reason I'm including the the first house as well, not the 12th, because it's happening in the 12th, I'm including your first house as well because there is a Parivartana exchange going on between Venus and Mercury. Okay, so what does all this mean for you? Well basically this is going to help you reach higher spiritually. This is a really exciting time for your intuition, psychic downloads you're going to be quite um, quite a bit of a live wire actually you've got mercury there as well so when it comes to you collecting and taking ideas from beyond the veil i think you're going to be extremely equipped to do so so i've got the note here keep a dream journal at this time if you can also keep a little notebook if you get ideas you're an artist you're a writer that kind of thing um, definitely be taking notes as to what comes up. So I'm also going to take a look at Mars and Ketu together at this time because we've got Mars moving into Cancer. Mars is going to be debilitated. Mars is going to be in your second house. So this is not that great for being with family. Okay, this is a good time to avoid arguments, confrontations, that kind of thing. But this is a fantastic time for you to pour energy into your work. Uh, you can really 
pour more energy into your work and excel at work. And I, I do think Ketu is going to be quite powerful, um, potentially. Ketu is offering, yeah, great energy for you to excel at work and overcome the competition. I do think so because the Lord is a little bit weak. And so therefore, I think Ketu energy could be quite strong in a sense. Um, because when I just look at Ketu in isolation, that's where I'm really getting the idea that Ketu energy could be quite strong. It's an interesting one. Have it, see how it works for you. I'm going to be observing this myself. But in summary, we have this massive solar eclipse and this can cause correct you spiritually. That's the big news this month. So I've got the note here. If you aren't, if you feel you aren't aligned with the divine or you're not in touch with what the divine wants of you or the all is one. Okay. If you feel somehow you're, yeah, you're not quite on track spiritually or you're not aligned, you're not, you're not quite there. This eclipse may put you firmly on track. I do believe. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that you might see the results straight away, but also it might take many months for you to see these results. So it's a tricky one. When I've observed this personally, there was one time where I definitely saw the solar eclipse jumped me forward to where I thought I should be. But sometimes where we think we should be is not always in the best interests of the all is one or the universe or, you know, everything as a whole, right? where we think we should be is, is sometimes very far away from what we should be doing at all. But um, I do think this is going to be an amazing time for you to potentially course correct spiritually. It could be a really, really good time. So Gemini, thank you so much for watching. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Welcome Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun. You could be any one of these. So solar eclipse, that's what's happening this month. The big news is the solar eclipse and that's happening on the 10th of June. Check where that is precisely in your area because it might vary. But for you, this is happening in your 11th and 12th houses. Now I'm including your 12th house because there is a Parivartana exchange uh, between Venus and Mercury. Oh, I love this energy for you. This is fantastic. This is a great time to wish or dream big. What, what do you really wish for? What do you really, really want? And I know sometimes in these monthlies it can get a little bit repetitive because it feels like I'm saying probably the same thing every time. I'm sure I talked to you last time about wish big or all that kind of thing. No, you, you really have to do this because <laughs> we've got Rahu, Moon, Sun, Mercury, all there in the 11th house, the 11th house of hopes, dreams and wishes. And this entire line is going to be alive uh, for you. And that's the future. This is solar energy. This is all about and solar. It's Rahu and Sun too. This, you're building the future here. So your dreams are going to really count. OK, so the universe is going to be taking note of what it is that you want to achieve what it is that you're all about. Don't worry, next month, hopefully there'll be something new or different because maybe, yeah, I'm just trying to think back to last month. Did I say some similar thing? I probably did. But um, next month will be different, don't worry. But this month, you really do have to wish for the, for the big thing that you want. And that, that's in any area of your life. That's um, the new house, the new job, you know, more love in your life, you know, more um, the barriers being broken between you and, and your family, an ability to love each other and, and have a great time and all that. So wish for all these kind of things. What else do we have here? We've got Mars and Ketu together. That's what I'm looking at. I like to look at these two together because Mars is the Lord of uh, the house where Ketu is. And because the Lord is a little bit weak, and it's an interesting thing that I'm saying here that, you know, wouldn't that therefore make Ketu weak as well? But it's interesting. I actually think Ketu energy will be quite strong. Uh, because the Lord is going to be a bit weak. It's interesting why I'm saying that. I do need to contemplate that more myself. But um, that was the insight that came to me. So I thought, okay, let's go with that. <laughs> but no, seriously, what's happening here for you is we've got Mars in your first house, indicating that you're going to spend more. It might. 
be that. Yeah, I mean, that could be one of the things you might also, it might also manifest in terms of you might feel a little bit more run down. So see how this is for you. This is going to happen through to uh, July, mid-July. Okay, so this is quite a while. So if you are feeling a little bit run down, just don't overdo it. That's my only advice there. Um, you know, and by a bit run down, I just mean like you get a little bit tired, more tired than usual or something. It's not, it's not going to be anything major. Um, but yeah, it might manifest as you spending more, might manifest as you feeling a bit run down, might manifest as your mum being um, a bit more tired or you might even argue with her a little bit or, or bicker with her or something. So just be careful of that. Keto in the fifth might raise expenses. So be careful of that financially. It could be a good creative time. It could be, you know, um, it could be a time where some more things from your past lives become online for you or become available to you. Because, I mean, that whole line is going to be on kind of like a live wire. It's going to be alive and the eclipse is happening. So it's, it's kind of exciting. It could kick up some dust. It could bring up some old stuff. It can bring up old karma as well. You know, uh, it, there's lots of possibilities here. But on the whole, I mean, I'm, I'm liking the look of this uh, for you, Cancer Moon. Let's have a look at what can this course correct. So in summary, what I want to say is that this solar eclipse can course correct your desires. Okay, it can bring you back to what it is that you really want. Uh, and, and this is sometimes hard to know and hard to hard to figure out because sometimes what we think we want actually isn't the right thing for us. So this, this can all get very deep and complex. But um, I think this solar eclipse can course correct you in terms of your desire. It can bring you aligned and more in line with you desiring what is good for you. So it, wouldn't it be great if we wanted the things that were good for us like instead of craving you know chocolate all the time we craved broccoli and, and salad and good things for us. you see it's, it's this kind of thing it's like I feel like there could be a course correction in terms of you wanting what's right for you and you being more in a line with all of that this could be an amazing time um, <clears throat> I've also got the note here if you could have anything what would that be? And a really interesting thing that came up this morning as I was thinking about this, I'm going to spend a bit of extra time with you uh, because this came up probably for you, probably someone out there needs this. And that was, coaches always ask the question, oh, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? That's actually the wrong question to ask. The right question to say is actually, if you had no money, uh, what would you do? Because then you really have to reach for what's inside. You see, if you, if you have no money, and, and let's say you've got your bills being paid for a little bit, for like a year or something, but then after that, that's going to run out and you, you're going to have no money. So in that situation where there's actually no money, no spare money at all, what do you do then? And what you will find is you will reach for the real, actual, practical thing that you can help the world with now. Someone out there needs your help now. And what is it that you're reaching for inside to give to them now? See, because that question of if you had all the money in the world, that's a kind of ridiculous one because, because then you, you wouldn't have to reach within necessarily. You could just live in a world of pleasure and enjoyment and not actually give anything of yourself to the world, you see. So cancer, some, somebody here needs that. It's really, really interesting. So I don't know who that is, but yeah, I think reach, what, what is it that you need to reach for within you in, in a very practical way and give that to the world now? There will be something. And part of this solar eclipse is going to be course correcting you so that you're in a position to give the world what you've come to give. Okay, this is all good. And it might take some months for you to see the benefits and effects of this solar eclipse. Sometimes it's very obvious, sometimes it's difficult to see. 
uh, and you could be kicking off a cycle that starts to bear fruit much much later so keep observing keep seeing how all of this works for you and we are now going to welcome leo leo welcome leo moon leo ascendant leo sun you could be any one of these i know in my comments i'm hearing people are saying things like well only the ascendant works for me that's absolutely fine so you observe for your life what's working for you and see how this all goes okay so what do we have going on we've got a big solar eclipse that is the big news for this month now it's on the 10th of june check if you're in the united kingdom or united states might be different day different time but for me here in australia it's 10th of june and for you leo moon this is happening in your 10th and 11th houses yeah this is happening in your 10th house leo moon I'm always talking about career with you guys every month and you must be thinking man these reports are always the same you will feel it the most because you've got Saturn in the sixth so I'm always talking about and that's like 2.5 years so I'm always talking about career when we're touching on Saturn and now we've got this eclipse happening where Rahu is in the 10th and 10th is career so unfortunately Leo Moon I'm always talking about career for you this will change massively uh, in April 2022 okay so you are going to have new news but don't worry I mean look stick with it each month that's why I try to follow the small the faster moving planets so that I've got something a little bit new to tell you each time um, so do check back next month but um, I can understand if you're like oh man she's going to talk about career again I am uh, because the solar eclipse is happening 10th 11th houses now I'm including the 11th because there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Mercury so where is this happening for you and what does it mean so for you i've got the note here that this will enable you to wish for the next platform you want to achieve uh, the next platform up in terms of your career so <clears throat> what would you like that to be what that next platform up where where would you like to get to and it's it's a platform thing that once you get there there's no going back to somewhere else kind of thing so that's what you can reach for and wish for at this time with this solar eclipse put that out there into the universe because Rahu in the Sun is all about reaching forward wishing its future where do you want to go okay and this this um, solar eclipse also has the potential to course correct you as well we're going to take a look at Mars and Ketu now quickly so Mars is moving into Cancer and for you that's in the 12th house okay so this Mars could be a little bit tiring could be a little bit draining it might be hard for you to get good sleep so keep an eye out for that I know the last time we had a I think the new moon I didn't sleep for five days it was kind of weird four or five days I just like had no sleep I had like two three hours and then I was awake it was kind of weird um, and it happened at the new moon that was very strange so observe this see how you go with your sleep patterns um, and I've got the note here try to channel any restlessness into creative projects if you can uh, we've got Ketu in the fourth house so this is not the best time for travel <laughs> it's not the best time for anybody's travel so um, that's yeah that's okay you, you probably don't have travel plans and that's probably a good thing uh, I've got the note here keep an eye on mum's health be careful in your interaction with your mum uh, and do watch your expenses yes fourth house it can be a bit of a place where expenses happen in the watery houses yeah expenses can go up can't they um, Jupiter is well placed I look I had to find some good news for you guys as well because and a bit of variety here so look Jupiter is well placed for you this should be a good time for marriage or those of you who are in married uh, you're married you've got a partner long-term partner business partner this should be good for that but in summary Leo uh, what do we have here so in summary it's the big news it really is the solar eclipse and I just want to finish on the fact that the solar eclipse can course correct you it can course correct you for you it's in terms of your career so if you feel like you're behind your peers if you feel like you're behind where you could be or where you should be 
this solar eclipse really has the potential to jump you forward, to bring you forward a little bit. Uh, I've seen this happen in my own life. There was one solar eclipse. Not every solar eclipse does this. Just in some, I will find that, you know, it, it will do some magic for me. But, but yeah, I think it's once or twice I really felt it. But other times solar eclipse has come and gone, I didn't observe the effects. But the other thing I will say is that it might take some time to see the results of this. And when it comes to career, I was thinking back to when I did my soul coaching qualification. That was actually in 2010. So it's taken me, and then I started really doing this coaching work in 2016, 2017. So look at that, seven years it took. And imagine how many eclipses there were in between, a lot. So, so keep an eye out, see, but I know that those eclipses were course correcting me and they were, you know, I, I was a big ship turning and uh, I've, I've now turned and I'm, I'm sailing finally. So, you know, um, work with the universe, keep being positive and you will see things will change, things will transform. All right, so we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. This is either Virgo moon, Virgo ascendant, Virgo sun. Keep observing, keep seeing where these reports are helping you uh, because some of you, the ascendant works, some of you, the moon works. Hey, some of you, the sun might work too. So let's take a look. What's the big news? I've got a solar eclipse. The solar eclipse is happening on the 10th of June. Now, 10th of June, Sydney, Australia. It could be somewhere different if you're in the United Kingdom or United States. Now for you, it's happening in your ninth and 10th houses. And I'm including the 10th because we've got a Parivartana exchange happening between these two houses. And that's really where the eclipse is happening. So I've got the note that you're going to be seeking out higher realms of authority in your life. And I do get the sense that you're wanting to take charge more, you're wanting to have your hands on the clay and really be shaping uh, your life, you know, the masterpiece, the, the, the great work of art that is you, that is your life. You want to have your hands on that. Uh, and yes, hands definitely, because you got Ketu there in the third. Brilliant. So I've got the note here, you'll want to have more responsibility over your life. Be the main authority in your own life. You know, the ninth house is the place of the father and it's also authority, it's rules. It's where a lot of rules get set, the government's there. So this is a place where you want to be the authority of your own life, you know. Uh, you want to shed all, all that outer stuff that you don't need. So I think this eclipse, and this eclipse could have some of that help you shed what you don't need so that this is a great thing um, straight away there so going to take a look at mars and ketu together so oh look at that this is so cool you have got mars in the 11th house i love this you've got the best thing going on you've got the best thing in the zodiac this time look at that you've got mars in the 11th house you got Ketu in the third. So Mars in the 11th house is brilliant for work projects, uh, going for promotions, all that kind of thing. Ketu in the third is gonna give you courage and confidence. And you're just gonna be, you're just kind of gonna be like on fire and really cool. Like <laughs> that's what I'm seeing. I, this is great energy. Uh, Housewise, this is fantastic, okay? So I've got the note here, you will feel empowered to act in a way that's good for all. These are brilliant energies. Yeah, you've got a really great time. That You can enjoy that right through to July. So that's great there. Uh, but in summary, in terms of this solar eclipse and how will this course correct you, I've got the note here, this is perfectly poised to help you take more charge of your life, to help you feel more hands-on with the creation of your life than ever before. You know, you're gonna feel like, you know, as you, want it to be your life will shape that way i, I think you've got the potential uh, to to have more of that inner power inner authority it's going to be a good time i've also got the note here to say that it might take some months to see the results of this you'll notice sometimes a solar eclipse will be something obvious that happens and you see it straight away sometimes 
uh, it can take months to see the results. So observe how this is for you. I notice in my own life, sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes the eclipse will come and go and nothing much happens. All right, well, we're going to now meet Libra, Libra Moon, Libra Ascendant, Libra Sun. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So what's the big news this month? Well, we have got a solar eclipse and that's happening on the 10th of June here in Sydney, Australia. Now for you, if you're in the United Kingdom or United States or wherever you are, it might be somewhere different, uh, different date, different time, that kind of thing. So check if you want a precise time. But for you, this is happening in your eighth and ninth houses. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I've got the note here, I'm including two houses. Why am I saying that it's happening in two houses? Eighth and ninth. Well, that is because I'm including the ninth because there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Mercury. So for you, what is this going to mean for you? So you're going to reach for greater harmony in your family relationships uh, and with in-laws or with those you share assets with. And when I now take a look at Mars and Ketu to see what they're doing, because Ketu is the south node, so that whole line, the eclipse line is going to be alive and it's going to be active. So that's why I want to see what Ketu's up to as well. And it's Lord Mars is going to be debilitated. So this is all very interesting. So when I look at Mars and Ketu together, Mars is going to be in your 10th house. That is good for work. Regardless of what the notes and, uh, you know, different people say, I think I was saying regardless of what the notes and different, the, what the research books and whatever people say have written and published that Mars in the 10th is not so good. Uh, I found it to be really good. <laughs> I found it to be great for work. I've just got the note here, just be careful how you talk to superiors and that's through to July. So you've got Mars. And Mars is debilitated, but housewise he's great there. So I do see your Mars as being quite strong. Now Ketu in the second house is giving you the power to organize your finances better. Okay, so do be careful with expenses. Uh, but this could be a really good time, Libra Moon, for working out shared assets or big family wealth or you know, um, taking a look at your savings or, or, or doing something positive in that regard. But if we take a look at my summary for this month about the solar eclipse, I've just got one final thing to say here and that is that the solar eclipse can really, it has the power to course correct you, it has the power to, you know, put you more in line with where you think you should be or where you would like to be. And I'm saying for you, I think this solar eclipse can help clear up any issues with your big finances or joint finances. Also, if you felt behind financially for any reason, this might jump you forward. Okay, uh, I've got the note here, it might help you to become more financially independent. And it might take some months to see the results of this as well. Okay, sometimes it's very easy to observe an eclipse and to see an instant result. Sometimes they can be very obvious and instant things happening. Equally, sometimes it's a bit murky. It's not easy to see the exact effect immediately because if you're course correcting a really big ship, it takes a long time for a big ship to turn. So see how this pans out for you, Libra. All right, we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Sun, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now the big news this month is the solar eclipse and that's happening on the 10th of June. Check where you are and see, okay, if you're in the United Kingdom, United States might be, you know, uh, might be a little bit different for you, but um, Definitely Sydney, Australia, it's happening 10th June. Now for you, this is happening in your seventh and eighth houses. Now I'm including the eighth house because there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Mercury. So what does all this mean for you? Well, for you, this all has the potential to clear out old heartbreak energy. 
I love this for you Scorpio this is great um, who doesn't want to have their heart cleared out of <laughs> old residue of old you know flames and all that kind of thing so um, if you're single I've got the note here that this could have you reaching for a better type of partner a more suitable type of partner okay um, sometimes it can be difficult with relationships especially you see yeah sometimes intellectually we know that oh I should date this kind of person and yet all your chemicals say no I want that type of person who's terrible for me <laughs> right that happens okay now I feel like this solar eclipse has the potential to kind of um, bring you more aligned with what is going to be good for you and can have you reaching for a better quality of partner and one that you intellectually want and your heart and your chemicals and everything will want that person as well okay so I think that that's the power of this solar eclipse for you I think it's quite incredible uh, it's really going to clear out that that relationship marriage side of life for you and if you're in a marriage this could help eclipse out the old stuff that you don't need this is a future oriented time this is you kind of reaching for better and good things so I'm loving these energies for you. Now let's take a look at Mars and Ketu together. I want to look at these because Ketu is in on that line of the eclipse and Mars is going to be debilitated. So let's see what's happening here for you. Uh, Mars in the ninth house. Mm, yeah, that might make work feel like a hard slog. Okay, so this is through to July. So if work has felt like a bit of a drag or a hard slog, well, I'm here to tell you it's uh, that's not going to improve I don't think uh, but observe that and see okay and I'd love for you to write uh, and let me know how it goes if it's not like that it could be different I've got the note here Ketu in the first might even might bring some confusion to married married life uh, it might bring some confusion to your partnership I, I do think that there, this is a powerful solar eclipse and I think it's going to clear things up but along with that there could be some confusion this could be an unsettling time in your relationships as well really observe and see how this manifests for you uh, it's going to be slightly different for everyone and it kind of does depend on your individual chart as well but in summary where is this solar eclipse jumping you forward well i'm seeing that it could even jump your business forward if you're self-employed uh, it could bring more visibility to your social media platforms as I said earlier it could really clear out your heart it could really bring you more in line with the relationships that are good for you so the ones that you logically know are good for you but you will emotionally and physically want the right thing too so that's good um, I've got the note he could get you ready for a more suitable partner if you're single and I've also got the note here that it might take some months to see the results of this okay so Scorpio I'm wishing you the very best take care take it easy you've got that Saturn in the third there still hopefully you can keep capitalizing on that don't worry if um, <clears throat> you know as, as I say like with Mars being being opposite there through to July that that might put a dampener on your ability to manifest really well with Saturn as well so just hang in there okay there are there are good transits coming so uh, yeah hang in there Scorpio as always all right we are now going to welcome Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining I said Sagittarius moon didn't I I should have said Sagittarius either ascendant moon or sun I'm trying to get into the whole you could be anyone type thing <clears throat> because I've had quite a few comments of people saying this works really well for my ascendant but not for my moon so I must uh, go planet neutral oh, we've got a new category now <laughs> planet neutral okay um, what's the big news Sagittarius well we have a solar eclipse happening and that's gonna be happening on the 10th of June that is here in Sydney Australia it's gonna be 10th of June check where it's happening for you in the United Kingdom the United States wherever you are um, now for you this is happening in your sixth and seventh houses and I'm including the seventh because there is a peribarth and an exchange happening between Venus and Mercury so what does this mean for you well 
This has the potential to jump you forward in your career. I really like this. Or your service to the world, okay? Uh, and now I'm going to take a look at Mercury. No, I'm going to look at Mars and Ketu. We looked at Mercury when we were looking at the eclipse there. I want to look at Mars and Ketu. Ketu, because Ketu is on that line of the eclipse, uh, and Mars is going to be debilitated. So Mars is going to be in your eighth house opposite Saturn. I've got the note here in particular for you. Please be careful about accumulating debt. I have been working with some of you through the readings and I have seen uh, on a number of occasions now that yeah, Mars opposite Saturn is the time when people typically pick up debt. So um, be careful with that. I've got a particular note for you because that's kind of happening on your money line there. So um, that's an interesting one. So this is from now through to 20th July, okay? So definitely be careful about debt. You don't want to accumulate any more at this time because it might be difficult to get rid of it. K2 in the 12th. Now this might increase expenses for you. Look at that, it goes hand in hand. Expenses increase, oh, I'll just whip out the credit card, right? Be careful, okay? Um, I have done this, I know what this is like, this is not good. Um, but you know, the great thing about K2, your K2 placement, is it's a great time spiritually. So hopefully this all makes you less materialistic and less willing to do online shopping or any of that. Be careful with all that. Instead, do some online meditations or something. Do something else. I've got the note here. This is a brilliant time from now through to mid-July for spiritual growth, more psychic awareness, more downloads, more hits, more insights, more intuitive hits. So this is you being able to access your own information with ease, okay? This should be quite good. Um, and possibly, you know, some past life gifts may be coming online or, or you being able to access your own stuff, okay? I'm saying that because the Lord is weak. I know it's an unusual way to see that, but when I was looking at that, when I was putting these notes together, it just made perfect sense. So um, see, test this, see how that works for you. Now, in summary, where is this solar eclipse? Where does it have the potential to jump you forward? Well, I've got the note here. As I said earlier, I mean, yes, it is to do with your career. So this could jump you forward in terms of your career, could bring you an entire new segment of clients, an entire new ability to serve the all is one, you know, and that could be spiritually. That could be you just enhancing your meditation practice, you giving out good vibes, you know more loudly and strong stronger than ever before kind of thing and, and you bringing more peace to the world that way uh, this could be a really amazing time so keep an eye on the, all this see how it's impacting you okay put all these theories to the test you can write below and let me know um, how this is working out for you I know you're finishing your Sade Sate time please hang in there it's not too much longer to go you're doing great, okay? So Sagittarius, thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now gonna welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Sun. <laughs> welcome, welcome all of you. Uh, what do we have going on? What is the big news this month? It really is the solar eclipse. That is the big thing that's going on. It's happening on the 10th of June here in Australia, if you're in the United Kingdom, it could be different. If you're in the United States, it could be different. So check, double check. Uh, for you, this is happening in your fifth and sixth houses. And I'm including the sixth house because there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Mercury. So what does all this mean for you? Well, I believe it has the potential to jump you forward in terms of your creativity. If you're a creative person, an artistic person, creative performer, any of that, it's a brilliant time. If you feel that you've lost time on your creativity or on your creative projects, hopefully you should get that time in these coming months. So be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for, you know, very often with our creative projects, we need, it's time is what actually we need more than anything else. Uh, I'm hoping that you're going to be gifted or granted some more time to, to be creative. 
I'm also going to take a look at Mars and Ketu together because Ketu is on that line of the eclipse. Mars is the lord of where Ketu is. So Mars is in the seventh house. Mars is going to be debilitated. I've got the note here, be careful how you speak to your partner or your business partner. That's through to July. You've got Ketu in the 11th, which, oh, that's really good. Ketu in the 11th is nice. It might give you the energy and finances to transform your art or hobby into a side business. Or this could be a time where you create another income stream. That's kind of cool. If you're able to do that uh, and it's not too difficult, which sometimes a lot of these things, they aren't too difficult. If you just kind of incorporate it into the structure of your day or your week, or you know, if you find uh, that you know maybe there's, I was talking, to a friend about this because he has one day per week to devote to his business and I was saying well you can upload to Instagram once every week and he was like oh yeah he wasn't thinking in those terms but he can you see he can just and but he can also he could do it on Thursday at the end of his uh, paid work day and that way kickstart the Friday like the Friday has already begun kind of thing. It's interesting. How do we kind of embed into our week or into the structure of our week? Just embed some little thing that is really easy to do and that yet over a period of time could be another income stream. So this is the kind of way that you could be thinking because you've got Ketu in the 11th there. Um, and this is, you know, the solar eclipse could really help jumpstart you in that direction. It really could help you get things going or it could be interesting so this solar eclipse in summary i'm saying that this solar eclipse could jump your creativity forward could bring you new streams of income uh, this is the kind of thing that you could kick off now and that you could see you start to see results months later um, to see how you go with this but these are the kind of energies that are around it's quite creative and lovely energy is what i'm seeing here. I mean, Venus is not great in the sixth house there for you, but I actually find Venus in that position to be pretty amazing. Uh, actually, it's, it's, you know, it's not bad at all. I, I don't think so. I like all this for you. I know you've got that Saturn on your moon there. I am wishing you good energy. Hang in there, Capricorn. You guys are doing so good. I read your comments below. Um, a lot of you guys are commenting and saying, yeah, you know, thank you for the encouragement. I am 100% supporting you, cheering you on, encouraging you. Better days are coming. I'm telling you, just hang tight, get through this. You're going to be fine. These are creative energies. Honestly, this month is very creative. If you can find time to be creative, if you can find time to just be in a little world, a bubble of your own and where you are just being creative. Try, try to carve out some time like this. It's going to be so good for you, uh, Capricorn Moon. So keep hanging in there. I'm telling you, you have picked the time of the universe to be having your side of stuff. Like you, you guys are going to come out heroes. I'm telling you, I, I hope I tell you this every time. I will tell you this every time. I will make sure I tell you. You're going to come out and, and be the leaders and be the champions, really. Cap this is the time. This is Saturn in Capricorn. This is such a big time. I'm going to remember it for the rest of my life, you know, um, and I'm not Capricorn Moon. But uh, this, this, is, this is very significant. So uh, you are the leaders and the heroes definitely right now. And um, I'm wishing you well, Capricorn. Hang in there. Okay, now we are now going to meet Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Sun. I'm doing that for each sign now. Before it was always Aquarius Moon, wasn't it? But now I'm changing because many of you have written and you've observed that, look, this works for my Ascendant. So have a look, see where it works for you. For me, I do notice both my Moon and Ascendant. I should tune into my Sun as well. <laughs> I should see how it works. I don't really tune in for me. I'm too busy. 
I'm too busy doing readings for everyone else. That's what's going on. Uh, okay, let's take a look at Aquarius Moon. So what's happening for you? Now, this month, the big news is the solar eclipse. I'm just going to check on the time. Good, we are fine. Oh, that's a relief. Okay, uh, solar eclipse is happening 10th June. That's the date. Now, this is the 10th of June here in Sydney, Australia. It could be happening United Kingdom different, slightly different daytime, uh, slightly different day, daytime in the United States. So perhaps check where you are. But for you specifically, this is happening in your fourth and fifth houses. Okay, this is interesting. Now I'm including the fifth because there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Mercury. So what does all this mean for you? Well, I've got the note here that it would be great Okay, if you could spend a bit of time indulging in some wishful thinking. I haven't had to, I haven't said this for too many signs yet. There was a wishful thinking. There was uh, Rahu in the 11th. I told them to wish big. For you guys, I'm telling you to wish big as well. And I'm telling you to wish big for the sort of place or house where you want to live. That's what I'm saying. So funnily enough, just today I was on um, this channel. They, they called Matt and Summer. They're these English couple and they go around to these fancy houses and they just give you a house tour. And some of the houses are so amazing. And this is a good time for you to do a little bit of that activity. Where, where do you want to live? How do you want to live? Has that changed? You know, has the virus come and made your plans different? Maybe you don't want to live in the big city anymore. Maybe you want to move. Maybe you want to be somewhere in the countryside. It's a good time to be thinking about those things. Uh, and because it's solar energy, it's sun and Rahu, it's like a good time. You're kind of creating the future here. You're reaching out for the better thing. So what is the better thing you can reach for in terms of where you live or how you live? That's going to be a really good activity to do. This is just something that you can think about. You don't have to do any formal thing. If you wanted to write it down, you can and do the, the tear up thing and all that. But um, honestly, even just a bit of window shopping around would be amazing. Uh, I'm looking at Mars and Ketu together and I'm looking at Ketu because Ketu is on that eclipse line and Mars is going to be debilitated there in Cancer. So I wanted to look at this whole thing. Now Mars is in the sixth house. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Yeah, you're the, oh, Aquarius, I feel for you. On the one hand, you've got this brilliant Mars energy, Mars in the sixth house. Energy, great for um, service, career, work, getting stuff done, overcoming the competition, all that beautiful stuff. But then you've got Keith in the 10th, which is a dampener, okay? And that's a dampener in terms of career. So you've got beautiful, strong career energy in the sixth, and then you've got Keith being a dampener in the 10th. I was annoyed at this for you because it's like the goodness of Mars may be neutralized at this time. See how that goes for you. Uh, yeah, just, just see how that works out. So in summary, the solar eclipse, where is that going to jump you forward? It's, I think it's going to jump you forward potentially into a place where you'd really love to live. If you visualize that, if you send that message to the universe and say, this is what I want, you know, who knows, a few months to a few years, you might be living in that place. And especially if there's a big ship turning, right, you may not see the effects of this eclipse immediately. It might take some months, it might take some years, okay, because when it's, when it's a big ship changing direction, uh, that is definitely going to take time. So my camera battery is flashing up there. I'm going to change my battery. Hold on a moment. Pisces. Pisces moon, Pisces ascendant, Pisces sun. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So what's the big news this month? Well, it is the solar eclipse, which is happening on the 10th of June. Now check where this is happening for you. In If you're in the United Kingdom, United States, somewhere different, it might be different. For me here in Sydney, Australia, it is the 10th of June. And for you, it's happening in your third and fourth houses. So I'm including the fourth house there is a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Mercury. So for you, this has the potential to bring in new friends. Isn't that interesting? We've been talking about this a bit actually in the tarot picker cards. I'm sure some of you Pisces are watching those because I know Pisces loves that kind of thing. Yeah, this is really interesting. Could bring in a whole suite of new friends. Isn't that amazing? 
Uh, I'm looking at Mars and Ketu together now to see what they're doing because Ketu is on that line where the eclipse is happening and Mars is going to be debilitated, Mars is moving into Cancer. So Mars is going to be in your fifth house and I do think this is going to bring some more energy to your creative projects, which is great. Uh, also some more energy to, if you spend time with your children. Be careful, of course, how you speak to both children and your uh, the seniors at work actually that's you have to be more careful of that I'm sure you're gonna be fine with your own kids but like your seniors at work be careful okay there could be some I don't know sometimes Mars can be a little bit difficult there in the fifth house with the seniors at work that's through to July Kato in the ninth is really good that's really good for your spirituality that's gonna be amazing for like going on long intellectual journeys, reading books, finding new teachers, finding new online teachers, online courses. I'll give you a name right now, Christian Sundberg. I looked up Christian Sundberg, I watched some of his lectures, his interviews, I was just like, wow, this guy's amazing. I think he's writing a book and I can't wait for that to be released. I would love to read that. So um, you might find some really cool new teachers. Uh, I mean, he's new for me, but he'll be, you guys, there'll be many of you out there who are like, oh, I knew him ages ago. So, you know, but this could be a good time for, um, for journeys through the mind, you know, this could be really good. So overall, what's the overall deal with this solar eclipse? I mean, I've got the note here that it could jump you forward socially. If you feel like you've missed out on good times with friends, you've missed out on socializing, and we have, we've all missed out on that due to the, all the lockdowns and all that kind of thing. So <clears throat> perhaps this is happening in an area where, well, hopefully you're living in an area where you're able to meet up with people, you know? Uh, and, and if that's the case, you could be, this solar eclipse might be, giving you the ability to kind of um, catch up on lost times or old times or you know cat, get, get up to speed or you if you feel like you've been behind in some way socially this could also jump you forward in terms of your courage in terms of your confidence this could just make you feel like um, like without doing anything you might feel like you're happy with where you are you know there there are nice energies in this solar eclipse i really do believe i don't see this as being a deep dark scary bad things gonna happen i genuinely see this as the really nice energies this parivartana exchange is just gorgeous and it's happening in terrific part of the zodiac for you so you could be feeling more artistic you could be feeling more creative as well more creative in the home uh, you know, more communicative with friends. It could just make you feel good. I'm loving this for you, actually, in particular, now that I'm looking at the chart a bit. This is a really nice solar eclipse for you Pisces people. So I'm loving this energy. And I think without you doing anything, you could feel like, do you know what? I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. I'm, I'm on track. It could give you that feeling as well. It could be a really nice solar eclipse, this one. So keep an eye on it see how this plays out for you write me a comment let me know how you go with this eclipse energy i would love to know i love hearing your first-hand experiences of how all this stuff plays out for you uh, if i'm unable to comment or put a like please don't worry um, i do read everything at least but sometimes i'm just super busy because i've got readings on i've got a lot of readings uh, at the moment so i'm actually fully booked until um when is it july uh, yeah, I think I even have some readings coming in July now, so um, I'm pretty busy and I'm loving it. Thank you everybody who books me. Um, thank you to all of those who are watching. I know some of you come and, and you watch the, a bit of your bid and then you'll actually watch the end uh, as well. So thank you so much to everybody who watches these videos. Thank you so much for liking. Thank you so much for commenting. I'll, I'll get back to you when I can and know that if I can't it just means I'm working on something else I'm probably working on creating content as well I'm trying to do that as well I've got so many content ideas oh gosh I just where's the time I just don't have enough time but um yeah I, I I'm on it so um thank you so much everyone and 
I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.